Our aim in these sessions is to help you find real freedom through a childlike faith that completely trusts in God's love and acceptance. We've been seeking to answer the question, what is prayer? In this last part of session two, we'll discover what makes prayer work. John 14, 16 says, I will ask the Father to send you the Holy Spirit, who will help you and always be with you. After Jesus rose from the dead, he appeared to his followers several times. He told them that he was returning to his Father in heaven and would give them the Holy Spirit. God gives his children the gift of himself, his own spirit within them, to empower them. According to Romans 8, verse 26, The Holy Spirit helps us in our daily problems and in our praying. The Holy Spirit empowers you to pray, without doubt, in line with what pleases God, and with God-given authority. Let's look at these truths one at a time. Firstly, the Holy Spirit empowers you to believe that God will answer your prayer. At some stage or another, we have all faced challenges that seemed insurmountable. Jesus assures us in Mark 11 verse 23 that if you have faith in God and speak to the mountains in your life, they will be removed. He said, If you have faith in God and don't doubt, you can tell this mountain to get up and jump into the sea, and it will. Faith can move the things that seem like mountains in your life. Jesus did not say, have faith in prayer, or have faith in the person praying, but have faith in God. Galatians 5 verse 6 says faith works through love. Faith, therefore, believes that I am loved and accepted by God, and He wants to answer my prayers. Secondly, the Holy Spirit empowers you to pray in line with what pleases God. Jesus' followers asked Him to teach them how to pray. From the well-known Lord's Prayer, we learn that He told them to pray, May your kingdom come, may your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 1 John 5 verse 14 assures us that God will answer our prayers when we pray according to what He desires. It says, We are certain that God will hear our prayers when we ask for what pleases Him. Are you thinking, how can I be sure that I'm asking God for something that pleases Him? The answer to that question is, you'll discover what pleases God by reading His Word the Bible. Every time you declare the truth of God's Word in prayer, something happens because when you pray according to the Bible, you know you are praying according to God's will. Thirdly, the Holy Spirit also empowers you to pray with your God-given authority. In Matthew chapter 16, Jesus speaks to Peter as an individual. And again in Matthew chapter 18, he speaks to all of God's children. He says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The things you don't allow on earth will be things that God does not allow. And the things you allow on earth will be things that God allows. What does it mean, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven? Keys are the symbol of authority. When you are given keys to a house, you have been given authority to enter the house. Also, when you have been given keys to drive a car, you have been given authority to drive the car. Jesus is saying, I will entrust you with authority within my kingdom. When Jesus died on the cross, he took the punishment for the sins of the whole world and defeated Satan and the power of death by rising from the dead. According to Colossians 2.15, Satan lost his legal right to rule. It says, God stripped the spiritual rulers and powers of their authority. With the cross, he won the victory and showed the world that they were powerless. In prayer, we use our God-given authority to enforce Jesus' victory in the circumstances of life. 
We do not have to defeat Satan. Jesus did that. The victory has been won. How do we enforce the victory that has already been won? There's a resemblance between the authority of a policeman enforcing the law and a child of God enforcing Jesus' victory. A policeman exercises his authority by enforcing the law here on earth or the verdict given by a judge, whereas a child of God exercises his or her authority by enforcing the victory that Jesus has already won in the spirit realm. Both the policeman and God's children have the right to enforce action because of their title or position. John chapter 1 verse 12 tells us that we have been given the rights and privileges of being God's child. In the Amplified Bible, it says, To as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the authority, that is, the power, privilege and right to become children of God. The policeman's uniform displays his authority whereas a child of God is clothed with God's power and authority. Before Jesus returned to heaven, he told his disciples to remain in the city until they were clothed with power from on high. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is available to fill and clothe you every day. How awesome is that? You are not only clothed with power, but also with authority. Isaiah 61.10 says, He has clothed me with the garments of salvation. According to Romans 5.17, You have authority because you have been put right with God. It says, All who receive God's abundant grace and are freely put right with Him will rule in life through Christ. The policeman's weapons are his gun, baton, and handcuffs, whereas the child of God's weapons are praise, the name and blood of Jesus, and the word of God. We will examine how these weapons work in the fifth session. A policeman cannot just do his own thing. He is under authority and must uphold the laws that have been put into place. To uphold means to honour, keep, and support. Likewise, a child of God, to enforce the victory that Jesus has won, can't do his or her own thing. A child of God is under God's authority and must uphold and obey what God says in his word. We have learnt that to enforce Jesus' victory, we must be a child of God, be filled and clothed with God's power, know and use our spiritual weapons, Obey or uphold God's word. Don't be afraid to use your God-given authority. Jesus tells his children in Luke 12, 32, Don't be afraid, for your Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. This means God has delegated to his children the responsibility of ruling in his kingdom, to rule and reign within the spirit realm through prayer. Within God's kingdom, we are promised joy, peace, power, and authority to triumph over the evil one. Romans 8 verse 37 assures us that We have complete victory through him who loved us. While the Bible teaches us that victory is assured, nowhere are we promised that we'll always receive instant victory. In the next session, we'll talk about the trial of our faith and how many fail to gain or walk in the victory because they give up when going through a testing time. Join us in the next session and we'll give you keys on how to stay in faith when going through a tough time. We have learnt in this session that the Holy Spirit helps us in our daily problems and in our praying. He helps us pray without doubt in line with what pleases God and with your God-given authority. Let's ask God together for the Holy Spirit's help. Father, like Jesus' disciples, our request is, Lord, teach us to pray. Thank you that I come anytime 
directly to you in prayer. Give me the faith to claim through prayer all the good things you have for me. Holy Spirit, thank you for filling me with your power and giving me the wisdom I need to know how and when to use the spiritual authority I have been given so that I can overcome life's difficulties. In Jesus' name, amen. 